Hey there, it's Natalie Topa and I'm here in Samburu in Kenya during our ecosystem restoration boot camp with the community uh, that is here. And I just want to show the massive level of degradation and gully formation. So basically this is a pastoral community and they have cows and goats and it used to be that there were many um, homesteads at the base of this mountain uh, but as they were telling us you know the more the homesteads would sort of degrade the land around for fuel i mean well, yeah fuel wood for housing construction uh, that they would harvest forest for and trees and then of course grazing of the animals the land started to become degraded and then they noticed the trees started falling and it started to become more hazardous the gullies were forming and now we just have such huge i mean it's really hard to tell from right here um <laughs> this major major gully formation all throughout the area so the reason I'm making this video is because I just wanted to show the efforts of the community, especially a woman named Priscilla, uh, to try to stop the water um, from going and forming more gullies on this side of this valley. So, you know, these are the, some of the, the efforts at Earthworks. Um, so Priscilla, her family and other community members have been out trying to do these small scale structures. So physical structures, biological structures. So here she's got, and you know, I don't think she's measuring on contour, she's just eyeballing it. But we've got a number of different efforts that you can see. And she's really picked, you know, where these gullies are forming and she's observing where water, I mean, she's really been walking the water and observing the pathways and trying to create little check dams or uh, structures, half moons, I mean, you can just, you know, you can call them a number of things. Uh, but just efforts. So some are on contour, some are not on contour. Um, so you can see here where this is a tributary to the gully formation. So here they've tried to do a structure. You can see there's some plants growing in there. Um, here as well, they've dug a number of swales and eyeballing contour. So throughout the whole area, even up here, where, you know, she's really tried to target the gully head formation and these head cuts um, and some of the structures that have been broken. You know, we have animals here. You always have to think about who are the users of the site. But if you can see here, it's a bit hard from this dappled shade of the tree. She's trying to stop the water from coming in here. And then here as well, you know, where water's coming through. They've made this half moon, trying their best to do it on contourish, perpendicular to the flow of water here as well. Here's another one. And as you just move throughout, there's just all this evidence of efforts uh, of some of the community members who are trying to champion efforts to just protect this land. So anyway, I mean, it's it's a, a little bit of a futile effort at a very small scale. Here's another one. Um, but this is exactly the right approach, you know. Um, there, She's got the right approach in mind. And what we're gonna do is for the next week, we're gonna start at the top of that mountain there. And there's a lot of stones and rocks. So there we'll be focusing on stoneworks like stone face buns, deep trenches, micro trenches, uh, stone lines, and a lot of FMNR, farmer na managed natural regeneration. So rather than planting trees there, we're gonna really try to support the trees that are already growing. Also reinforcing them with um, water harvesting structures around the trees that have, that are not totally you know, pedestalized and just kind of dangling in the middle of the air. So we have a ton of different interventions. There's a there's a flat point, you know, that strip that's a bit flat, and that's when we're where we'll focus on half moons, you know, demi loons, uh, 
and a number just uh, many many different small scale structures throughout the whole entire landscape and you know that is really a compacted totally you know no unvegetated area now that has just become this concrete practically like hardscape completely compacted water picks up so much speed on that band and that is what gives it the power you know when you talk about the triangle of water uh things that give power to water the speed depth and volume so we're trying to those are the three things we can play with the speed of the water the depth of the water the volume of the water those are the three things we want to decrease to pacify the flows but what happens is all the water coming off the mountain hits that hardscape and then it has that drop where it, like a tooth just eats away and starts to really get power erosive power to start carving those those gullies and having massively incisive um, behavior so yeah i mean yeah it's just great to see that the community um, especially you know a select few have really been doing a lot to try to stop the flow of water so that takes observation it takes motivation and effort because not everyone in the community is doing that um but you can see if you don't stop it i mean this these you know head cuts are going to just keep unzipping this this watershed all of this planting has been done all this planting so they're trying to create a barrier uh you know to these gullies um so there's this also a wildlife area you have elephants and the, another risk that comes with these gullies is that it's become a, a daylight shelter from the heat you know hot sun of the day for hyenas and cheetahs you know we are in a wildlife conservation area in rural kenya so there's definitely you know the elephants the everything you can name so those are also part of the users of the site so it's you know some people come in and say oh we need to do big you know these big structures and no you need small scale strategies because part of the users of the site are herds of cows elephants bo boda bodas you know motorbikes uh vehicles sometimes so if you don't design for those users they're just going to come in and destroy the structures so we have to be really careful to uh do you know smaller scale strategies that they can weave throughout um and continue to use the space without compromising the the structures the earthworks the stoneworks so yeah that's it i mean it's a very beautiful area um it's you know it's a bit overcast today so you can't see that much but yesterday we did a massive transect walk you know we had a group that went all the way to, to the very top of the mountain and then those of us who sort of you know we think about the hat the belt and then the boots towards the outlet point we walked all the way up around to major homesteads down to the outlet point and uh, we've created 12 uh, transect points where we will be planning interventions we will only be doing three days of actual practical uh, physical earthworks and stoneworks uh, but we're not right now with the community establishing a community development plan for the next three to five years uh, that is completely based on their vision their you know all their inputs about livelihoods about cultural issues about the risks the seasonal calendars those traditional livelihood strategies many many things so uh, yeah then we're going to get to work and we'll start to show many of the uh, technologies that will be appropriate to this area for the scale of community and the scale of resources. So that's it. Hope that's interesting or helpful. Thank you.